All right. Question four. What level of demand exists for PC gaming, PC wrestling games amongst this audience? I'm going to just stop and define a parameter here. This audience is the sample, right? It's a representative sample. It's the sourcing of the sample. It came from an online survey of PWX subscribers, people who had been subscribing to the Pro Wrestling X mailing list for updates about the product. It was also uh, taken from bolstered half the. Gets right. There were about seventeen hundred people on the survey mailing list. Um, I think about one hundred and seventy, maybe two hundred of our responses came from the PWX list. So we got about a ten percent response rate there. We also, now oh, the fact I can talk collectively about this went out to professional wrestling online communities. Uh, it's 2005, so there's no Facebook, there's no Twitter, there's... Okay, we don't talk about it, but there was MySpace. Main place we were rated was we went out to LiveJournal. If you're not familiar with LiveJournal, it's, it's okay. Uh, there were a series of wrestling communities on LiveJournal that we posted up messages and got their community moderators to endorse us and say, look, yeah, fill up the survey. And we also grabbed uh, some endorsement from a few wrestling fan sites that actually put links to our stuff out there saying, we're, so we've got a mixture of wrestling fans and PWX fans. We'll casually say our response rate was to about 10% uh, for the PWX mailing list probably about seven, maybe eight percent for the um, general community, which would be about standard for an unsolicited online survey in that era. I promise I will actually publish the full details of that online at some point. Now, so the level of demand for this audience, this audience being the data set, now are you down there? So, first thing is you've got to two distinct variables in there to go and work with. Um, that's PC1 and PC2. What you're going to score points for is how you explain the level of demand, your analysis of it, and your justification of it. So that's part one of question four. Part two, identify two primary market segments with the strongest interest in a PC wrestling game. Identify then, having done that, identify the wrestling interests of the two market segments and then which is the best segment to pick as a primary target market. Now, question four builds on work you have completed elsewhere in this paper. So question four, and look, I know the groups are splitting it up, and you take one, I'll take three, you take four. So, whoever's got question four, you have to run this analysis, you gotta do this work. But, you also have the opportunity to check in with the people who've done question two, and say, uh, look, what, what's the attitude about non-American wrestling here? You know, what's the general, what is the general population of this sample, what do they feel? You then also can go check in with question three, uh, you know, how's Canada felt, you know, what's the attitude towards Canada across the whole of the sample? Because your challenge here in question four is that you get to make a marketing segment. You actually get to do segmentation. And all the way through in, yeah, if you do any of the marketing subjects, we'll say, pick a market segment. Well, we usually just sort of hand wave to them, you know. Well, naturally you'd pick a narrow target market, wave, wave, and don't actually make you do it. This time, I'm making you do this. So, my advice is, first thing is, look at the P, uh, PC1, PC2. Look at the level of demand that exists. Then start saying, well, okay, how do I create another variable? What sort of variable would be useful to create here? And then look at it from the perspective of, how do I go and start slicing up this data set. 
And to do that, you want to be looking at things like uh, filtering the data set, or maybe creating new variables, maybe creating compound stuff that you this we've done some tutorial exercises on. But there's two, I think, two secrets in here to making this really entertaining for you and really fun. I think secret number one is making the call, actually feeling, you know feeling confident that you can make a decision. There will be no marks criteria sitting around the place saying the perfect market segment because that's not how business works, that's not how life works. Pick two segments that you think are good to go and then describe them, which means you also want to go back and look at the uh, you know, question zero, basic reporting requirements Give us the breakdown, give us the geography, their demography, their uh, age, identifying characteristics, what's their psychographic profile. Because you're asking as well here is, what are the, t what are the wrestling interests of the two segments? And we've got variables that cover that. In that, like I said, go look at that full data set and look at the variables. But also, look at the qualitative. When you've picked your segments, Go to Open6 and look at, run a frequency on Open6 with just the variables, just the people you want in there, and then look at the quotes that they've provided. What have they said in there that's just going to be like the money quote, the quote that makes it work, the quote that just defines this group? What's in there? Similarly, if you want to actually do this without doing the quant first, Go to the data set in Open6. You can either do this inside SPSS or using the Word document. And then go through and say, who's look at that qualitative data and say, is there enough here for me to go and pick a group of people and say, these people, these are my starting segments. What are their breakdowns? What are their, you know, what are their identifying marks? How many more of them are there in the population? So you can go one of two ways. You can either start at the quant side and come out to qual as your sort of exemplar highlight, or start at the qual side and identify market opportunities. Say, look, these are people who are really excited about the game. Let's, what commonality do they have? Well, they're similar ages, age blocks. Let's go have a look, what's in here? So again, your options there. I'm being really open-ended on this because this is huge fun. I, look, a lot of you are gonna stress out about this and I can't stop you doing that. But this is your Lego blocks. This is your opportunity. Uh, if you didn't play with Lego, or you hate Lego, pick something you like. It's your Bedazzler set. Um, it's your ingredients. It's your opportunity to go whip up an amazing looking uh, cake out of component parts. It is your opportunity to build, to create. You have a live real world data set. And you can select in this how you would do a market segment. Now that is going to be fun because you've been being taught how to do segments since intro to marketing. Now you actually get to do one. So huge fun to be had here. A lot of things, a uh, lot of opportunity, a lot of different ways you can handle it. Oh, just um, one other thing. You've got to pick one of the two of them. You have to tell me which is the best, which is going to be your primary target market. That means you've got to favor one of your two audiences. You've got to give me two viable audiences, then pick one that you would target first. And that is a marketing activity. And everything you are going to feel, every emotion, every frustration, every, I don't know how to do this, oh, what am I doing, why am I doing this, who am I to make this decision, it's a simulation exercise and we are currently going to simulate what you'll go through doing your target market selection when you get to be a marketer. Question five. All right. Okay, question five. How does the audience, how does the sample audience feel about PWX and the game concept? What are common themes in the feedback? Can these elements be incorporated into future marketing communication 
efforts. There is a quantitative element, there is a qualitative element. Now, common themes in the feedback, yes, this is the qualitative qual analysis. This is week 10's practice in the labs and discussion in the lecture theatre. Basically, what you are doing here is that you are effectively doing a literature review where you've got a finite block of literature and that's all the content in Open 6. What you also have is, in terms of the game concept and feeling about the game, is you do have a couple of quant uh, measures about PWX itself that you can go and use and make use of that. Uh, in terms of the challenge. Now, again, trying to put the external references in here, challenge number one is going to be about maintaining your, your focus in the data set. So, what are the themes out of here? Uh, obviously, you can use your methodology, uh, you, know, you get your references for your methodology approach of saying, well, I conduct a, con a content analysis through, you know, pick your method, pick your style, pick your approach. But also, the third part of this question, the part that I think a lot of you are going to try to skip because, you know, decisions. Can these elements be incorporated into future marketing communications efforts? Well, you can reference marketing communication efforts, can't you? You can reference that part of the marketing mix. You've got an advertising subject at this university. There are advertising textbooks. You can pop across to UC. They've got advertising books. You can grab a little bit of IMC theory to throw in to be your reference here. Also, once you've gone through those themes, the question is, can these elements be incorporated? You can say yes, you can say no. You can support, you can argue a case for using this, or you can argue a case for dismissing this. So, think about this. The other thing I'll tell you now is just make certain you're covering the whole of the sample audience, not just your target markets. Uh, if you are starting to do things in terms of you know, some of the fun bits where you go and filter your audience down or you create little sub selected categories. Just make certain you're looking at the whole case when you're doing question five. Question six, the management question, the concluding part. Will the success of PWX product be influenced by the geographic location of the firm. Provide a summary answer, 300 to 500 words, that addresses this question with reference to your own analysis and any appropriate secondary sources. Now the category any appropriate secondary sources is question one. Please link the start with the finish. Two, this is a judgment call. This is a value judgment call. This is where you go and say, I Based on the analysis in this report, PWX will be influenced, PWX won't be influenced. You are going to say, one way or the other, is there an influence, will it make a difference? If you don't, you don't score very well. If you do, you do score very well. It's that sort of simple. You are summarising, concluding and reporting. You are answering the question, does the geography matter? Bonus if you can actually point out what impact it would have on your chosen primary target market. Bonus. Because then I know you're really a good marketer. So the management question, this is the reason you're analysing this whole thing. The first five questions lead you up to being able to answer this to say, hey, does geography have an impact? So you close out on that. Other notes, uh, elements of interest. Okay. In terms of what I'm looking for, visually, layout, presentation, everything else here, 
Uh, prettiness mode is enabled. I know some of you got really quite thrown by the stark, blunt and brutal um, solo assignment requirement of just answer the question. Get in there, start on question one, finish on question six. For this round, you can have executive summaries, tables of contents, it can be in PDF files, it can be pretty, it can be graphical, and it can also be every bit as blunt as solo. There are no points on offer for pretty, there are no points on offer for fabulous, because I expect you to just be fabulous anyway, but there are no points to be won or lost by having topping and tailing um, of exec summaries and tables of contents and the only rule that is in absolute strict effect is no appendices. The reason why the no appendices rule is in place is that what students, what you would do, and let's be honest about this, what I would do is I would go and run my analysis and I'd bundle up into a little appendix which would be about 80 to 200 pages long and stick that on the end of my tiny little 3,000 word assignment. No. No, you don't get to do that. No appendices. What you do have to do is also be smart about how you report your data and your output from SPSS. I will, in the survival guide, be mentioning how to report results from different categories. I do not want to see a t-test output table. I do not want to see a correlation output table that has just been copied and dumped straight in. I want you to think what information from this output file matters. What counts, what should be in there. And that's the whole thing about this subject. This is the last, pre the exam, this is the last essay opportunity for you to show me that you think, that you think like a marketer and that you are a marketer. This is your apprenticeship. Yeah. The other thing about this particular assignment task is you learn as you do this. You don't know everything you need to know when you start this. You learn some of it on the way. It is on the job training. You are going to become more comfortable with SPSS as you move through the assessment. You start with something nice and comfortable like descriptives and frequencies and then you head down to do a quick t-test and then you get into a correlation and then you're looking and saying, Whoa, what about, and then you've got the options. Now, the other thing is for those of you who speak MATLAB or uh, any other stats package, fair game, you can use them. SPSS is what I speak, SPSS is what I'm training you, but if you speak another stat package, do it, use it, make it your own. Because it's the results as you interpret them that matter. And that's the key to this assignment. Interpretation is what matters. It's not about reporting output from SPSS. It's not about copying and pasting elements from other sources. It's about your interpretation. And that is what I'm training you to do. You're getting the practice. You've had the practice in solo. You've had the practice in the tutorial kits. You are now having one more time to showcase your skill and ability. So, I believe in you. You've shown yourselves to be a really good crew. You're sharp, you're smart, you're terrified. That wasn't what I set out to do, but if that's what, you know, gets you through the course and gets things done, fine, be afraid. But just remember, there are no monsters in this subject. This is not designed to trick you. This is not here to test your ability to second guess me. This is here for you to showcase your skills, to demonstrate your analytical abilities, to run, to pick up a data set, to run with it, to use it as a resource, answer a set of questions, and then produce a report. That's it. 3,000 words, short, sharp, fast. Stay focused, deliver clean, use your references, be smart about it, and let's knock this thing out. Let's get this thing done. I want to, I'll be absolutely honest, I want to see the answers. 
I'm looking forward to reading this. I am genuinely interested to see how you handle the market segmentation because I know this data set, but I've never run a market segmentation on it. That wasn't what I was commissioned to do. So I want to see what you've got to say. I'm looking forward to reading it. Let's make it fun. Let's make it interesting. And let's knock this thing out. All right? Done.